Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Pastor Trey is attending the Synod Assembly this weekend, along with our three delegates from our church, um, Carol Smith, Cheryl Fell, and Julie Moritz. So we're here together. We're going to make the best of it. Your announcements are listed in the uh, handout in the bulletin, so please take note. One thing I would like to call your attention, the Back to School Luau group is looking for volunteers to help serve. There's a sign-up sheet on the table right outside of Julie's office. So take a few minutes to look that over and see if there's a time you can help out. Also, next Sunday, kids, bring your backpacks to church. There's going to be a blessing of backpacks before the beginning of the school year. Are there any other announcements? If not, please stand for the call to worship. The living God is with us. Let us awaken our hearts to the presence of God, saying, God before us, behind us, above us, upholding us. God with us, among us, beside us, befriending us. God within us, flowing through us, animating and harmonizing. Please join in the opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Please join in the prayer of the day. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Morning. Morning. Glad to be at the Ambo again. <clears throat> the reading today is from Proverbs, Proverbs 9, 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls them from the highest places in town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. The responsive reading is from Psalm 34. Psalm 34, 9 through 14. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. The lions are in want and suffer hunger. Come, children, and listen to me. Who among you takes pleasure in life? Keep your tongue from evil. Turn from evil and do good. We just talked about, the pastor and I, about getting the congregation to laugh, and here I did it. Oh my goodness, here we go, the last page. <laughs> A reading from Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Jen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, 
you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. A is from uh, Pastor Bishop Tessa Moon Lisa. She has recorded a message for us, so let's sit back and enjoy. Dear friends, grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I greet you as your bishop, and I greet you on behalf of the 190 congregations of the Eastern North Dakota Synod. It is Synod Assembly weekend, and chances are, if you are experiencing this sermon from your home congregation, then likely there are others from your congregation, hopefully, who are at Synod Assembly this weekend. So it's really great that we can all be together in these various ways on this particular weekend. And it's very intentional that I greet you on behalf of the 190 congregations, because it's important for us, especially on this weekend, to remember that we are joined with others who do this mission and ministry together that each in our own place and location, we are living out our mission as followers of Jesus Christ, but that we are all doing this together in various ways. So if there are ever times where you feel alone as a congregation, know that there are so many others who are there. And my hope and my prayer is that as we journey together, that we will get to know each other more and more and be connected together more and more. So it is indeed Synod Assembly Weekend, and our theme this year is Live in Love. It comes from our mission statement. When I first was working with the staff and thinking about a theme for this year's Synod Assembly, I pitched the idea that I'd really like for us to kind of take the mission statement apart and live into a part of it each year to kind of unfold it and examine it and look and explore together and see how we each experienced it and see it in new ways and share our reflections together as we journey in this shared life together. And so, as I thought about it, our mission statement starts out, Jesus Christ calls us to live in love. Now, we could have started with just Jesus Christ because that is where we start. And if we did something with Jesus Christ calls us, that also would be great. But live in love felt like just the right phrase for this year. Because as I look back on the last year, year and a half, whatever you want to call it, I'm sure it goes back longer than that, and really all of humanity, living in love is sometimes a gift and sometimes a challenge. And I think particularly over the last couple of years, it has been challenging. How do we live in love as people of God? How do we live in love in our communities, in our families, in our churches? What does it mean to live in love? I hope that you will be exploring that this coming year and pondering it and looking for ideas and examples of what it means to live in love. Because Jesus Christ calls us to live in love as we serve, equip, and challenge God's people. That is the mission that unites us together in the Eastern North Dakota Synod. So we have this theme, live in love, and I just started thinking about it and got kind of playful and thought, wouldn't it be interesting if, if love were a land we could live in, right? If it's live in love, how do we live in 
a place called love. So think for a moment about the places you have lived. I've lived in North Dakota and Minnesota, Kentucky and Arizona for little bits, Connecticut, South Africa, all those places have been wonderful, have been challenging, have formed and shaped me. And there was lots of love, but none of them were the land of love. And of course, I'm just being kind of playful here because I don't know that there is an actual land of love. Although I like to imagine, what would that look like? What would that be like if there was a land we could live in that was love? Well, here's another thing that comes to mind as I have been exploring living in love. And it's actually one of my very favorite books of all time. Now, if you found young adult fantasy through Harry Potter or maybe some of the other great series, maybe this is not your favorite. Maybe it's a little old school, but it is a book that has been so important for me. And that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. Madeline Langle was an author who wrote all kinds of things. And this was her young people fantasy book about traveling to other galaxies, the hero who's a 13 year old girl named Meg. And it is about the power of love. It is about living in love. So if you don't know the story, the basics are that Meg and their neighbor friend, Calvin, and then Meg's little brother, George Wallace, they are going to travel through galaxies to rescue their father, Meg and um, George Wallace's father, because he has been gone for five years. He was off discovering a new planet, just like everybody's father does, you know, and they were going to try to rescue him because it seemed that something was wrong. And then if you know this story, you know that there's Mrs. Who's It, Mrs. What's It, and, and Mrs. Witch, I almost forgot her name, and these unique characters that also go with them on this journey. And if you haven't read this or watched the movie, I hope that that in and of itself gets you curious enough. Well, they make it finally to a plant, planet called um, Kamazots, which is ruled by an evil force, this disembodied brain called It. And Charles Wallace, there's a lot of things that happen. I'm not giving you a whole synopsis, but for the sake of this sermon, there's this story I want to tell. And that George Wallace ends up um, captivated and really captured his mind and therefore his whole being by this evil force called It. And Meg, who is very close to her brother, is trying, one, she's terribly afraid she's gonna lose him and she needs to get him free. And she realizes the clue to freeing him is the power of love. And so here's a little excerpt from the book. She starts thinking, Charles, Charles, I love you. My baby brother who takes care of me, come back to me. Charles Wallace, come back from it. Come back, come home. I love you. I love you, Charles. Oh, Charles Wallace, I love you. I love you. Charles Wallace, you are my darling and my dear and the light of my life and the treasure of my heart. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Charles. I love you, she cried. And that is what broke Charles Wallace free from this power of this evil, a disembodied brain called it that had power over his mind and therefore his whole being. Meg was rooted in love. She knew that it was love that could defeat the power that held her brother. She knew that love is the force that frees people. Well, St. Paul and others in the Bible, but St. Paul wrote about this too. In the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, he wrote, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of God that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. 
What an amazing blessing. Now, St. Paul's words are calling us to live in love, to be rooted and grounded in love, to know the love of Christ. And here's the thing. It is so tempting when we think about living in love to make it about what we do. I could come up with ideas about how we live in love, challenge us, encourage us, all of these explorations about how we live in love. And that is important. And we'll be exploring that as well. Those of us at the Synod Assembly, and I hope they bring back stories to share with you. And living in love, our actions is so important. But where does it start? It doesn't start with us. It doesn't start with what we do. The good news is that it starts with the love of God. God is the one who loves first. God is the one who roots and grounds us in his love. God is the one in Jesus Christ who gave the extravagant, abundant love. That is what roots us and grounds us. That is what gives us our identity and our being. And it is from that that the love can overflow to others. It is from that love that we are free to serve our neighbors because we've been set free in love. We don't have to worry about making God happy. That has all been taken care of. We are rooted and grounded in love and set free to love our neighbor, set free to live in love because we start in God's love. And this is your beginning, that God loves you with an overflowing, ridiculously generous, evil-shattering love. You. God loves you. Full stop. It is that simple and it is that complicated. And in Holy Communion, we're in this season of readings about bread the, and Jesus as the bread of life. And in Holy Communion, when we take the bread and in the wine, we are trusting that proclamation that Jesus is somehow present in, with, and under the elements. And Jesus is present, so it's no longer just bread and wine. And we take it into our bodies. Jesus Christ calls us to live in love. And when we come to the table, Jesus Christ lives in us. So, people of God, be filled with God's holy love. Know that in your body and with every breath, you are filled with the love of Christ, which has no end. May you be rooted and grounded with this radical love as you live in love in this world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.
join in the United Church of Canada creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. We offer now the prayers of the people. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, mend the earth. Cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological changes we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. Lord, in your mercy. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and those who suffer. We remember especially today, Marge, Marianne, Connie, Mike, Lori, Ivory, Nancy, Luke, Bonnie, Sue, Andrew, Steve, and Mary. Lord, in your mercy. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those who visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. Lord, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace to you, my friends. I ask that you share the sign of peace with those around you. That's good. Um, they have a, um, you know, you can say something about the offering. We don't collect, so I usually pray for a little bit there for some signings. We appreciate your continued financial support of our congregation. And as you know, we are not passing the plate. The plate is situated at the back of the sanctuary. So on your way out, if you have an offering, you pay, place it in there. 
there's also opportunities to give online, or if you don't like that option, just drop it off at the church hall. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Jesus, bread of love, you've set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Please join in the sending song. Do we have any kids that want to play today? Thank you, Fan. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. <laughs>